thing is menstruation. It's huge amounts of human vibrations. Religion versus spirituality. I mean, sex sells, right? And friends, you are thinking about it. My first time. 500 of us in the Metro Theatre, Sydney, July of 2015. I'd only been a fan for six months, but I was hooked. They had me. We were finally in the venue after waiting hours in the cold. I was on the fourth row on the left side. The opening act were done, but the pushing had already started. The crowd moved together like the tide, swaying back and forth. The anticipation and excitement was shared, like a kaleidoscope of butterflies flying through each of our stomachs. And then the lights turned on. The screams rose as the stomachs rocked. The fast-paced drumbeat and deep bass sent chills through my body. The concert had started. The rest of the show was a blur of ecstatic electro-pop, grin-inducing splashes of cheery indie ukulele, ec ecstatic rap rock and overwhelmingly powerful lyrics screamed and shared by hundreds of people. I watched in awe as the lead singer flew from one side of the stage to the other, from on top of his own piano to his drummer's platform, all the way up the scaffolding of the venue. He flailed and punched the air as his bandmate played the drums with more power, passion and conviction than I have ever seen. They depended on us, the swaying crowd. Not just as an energy source, but for physical support. We literally held the two band members above us as they sung verses of their most important songs or put their last drops of energy into bashing huge drums right on top of the crowd. The experience was overwhelming. It was euphoric. In that moment, I felt at one with myself and with everyone and everything around me. And although I did not know it yet, it was spiritual. For thousands of years, cultures all over the world have used the power of live music to heal and connect to the spiritual world. The Aboriginal people of Australia are the first known culture to heal with sound. Their didgeridoo has been used to heal broken bones, muscle tears, and illnesses of every kind for nearly 40,000 years. Whereas they use an instrument, Native American shamans use voice in healing rituals and even sing to themselves to heal. Egyptian priestesses use sistra, a type of musical rattle instrument that creates a jangling sound and creates huge amounts of healing vibrations that we know as ultrasound. The gong is used all over the world for its healing properties as it contains nearly the whole spectrum of audible sound. Human cells absorb the sound frequencies of the gong that we need and reject what is not needed. Here at Green School, at 2 p.m. every day, the gong signals us to take a mindful moment, to stop, breathe, center, and connect ourselves. The silence and stillness is palpable. There is something spiritual about the whole community pausing and breathing as one. A second time, a thousand of us in the Astral Theater, Perth, May of 2016. My best friend JJ and I managed to convince our parents to let us fly to Perth to see our favorite band in concert again, arguing that this was more than just a concert, this was a necessary educational endeavor. <laughs> Skeptical, they agreed. So we've been fans of the band for a little over a year now, I had noticed. To get to the best spot in the venue, fans had taken to lining up, or in some cases camping out for shows for extreme lengths of time. I mean, over two days. Now, we weren't that committed, not just yet, so JJ and I settled for bright and early, 6 a.m. Although my godparents, who we were staying with, seemed quite horrified at the thought of us lining outside the venue for over 12 hours, we went ahead and did it anyway. Best decision of my life. <laughs> we set up our picnic blankets, and being the good socialites JJ and I are, we made friends with the people around us. Little did I know they were soon to become some of the closest people in my life, or that one of them would become my girlfriend. We invited them over to our picnic blanket, 
ate peanut butter sandwiches, sung along to our favorite songs, bonded over card games, and laughed and laughed and laughed. I think Green School would be happy to know that we also acted as rubbish collectors for the day. Australians can be quite dirty. About halfway through the day, JJ and I noticed something wrong on our tickets. We found, instead of general standing tickets closest to the stage, we had accidentally bought balcony seats all the way up the back. We became extremely anxious, frantically trying to come up with a solution to get us into the standing area, but nothing was working out. As a last minute decision, we got our tickets up on our phone and noticed we could zoom up on the ticket barcode so as to not show the actual ticket, which said balcony seats. My hand shook as I held my phone out to be scanned. The wait was excruciating. Was I going to work? Were we going to get through? Was this illegal? Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the ticket scanned and we went on in. JJ and I looked at each other in disbelief. A weight had been lifted. Now, this show was different from the first. I mean, it was most of the same music and they still performed with the same power and passion and conviction, but there was something different about the crowd. We had spent all day creating connections with each other, bonding and sharing stories. And as we screamed out the lyrics we had waited months to hear, we were connected. I felt an overwhelming gratitude towards the incredible friends surrounding me and towards my favorite band up on stage. So with my head to the stars, I closed my eyes, held tight onto JJ's hand, felt the slow swaying of the crowd I'd grown to love, and really took in the music. I felt it again, that spiritual experience. Connection to myself and to everyone and everything around me. So I wanted to know why live music made me feel the way it did, and if it made others feel this way too. I started by researching peak experiences, described in a study conducted by Abraham Maslow as mental states in which people experience strong feelings of wonder, enthronement, ecstasy, and euphoria. He found that music-induced peak experiences can often be cathartic, characterized by the feeling of releasing something within. For my primary research, I conducted interviews with people while waiting in line for a concert and spoke to people online about how they experienced live music and how it made them feel. In single words, according to the 20 people I interviewed, live music is passionate, electric, exhilarating, ecstatic, and euphoric. It's influential, authentic, determination, and expression. It's hot and sweaty and raw and loud and overwhelming. Live music is unifying, connecting, belonging. It's safe and it's home. Live music is pure joy, catharsis, spirituality, and life-changing. Live music is alive. Brenna, interviewed from New Zealand, wrote, when I'm at a concert, I find myself surrounded by an overwhelming influx of passion. Both myself and the people around me are being taken over by a sense of devotion that is difficult to find outside of the mosh pit as the thriving group of people sway and jump and scream to the songs they have listened to a hundred times before, performed in such a raw and passionate way, the crowd as a whole finds a new definition of the word alive. Live music is the basis of all things spirited. It allows me to truly feel music that I previously may only have heard. Similar to me, she also mentioned that concert lines pay, play a big part in her experience and that in these concert lines, she met some of the most amazing people in her life. There aren't coherent words to describe the sense of unity and togetherness one can experience in a group of people all lined up on hard concrete for a concert. Something about this mutual passion creates incredibly special bonds that cannot be forged under any other circumstance. Another person interviewed at the concert had come from Ireland and had traveled all around the world following his favorite band on tour. He told me that live music also made him feel alive. I struggle a lot with the idea of God and faith, he said, so I've never been that big on religion, but I imagine it's how I feel about live music. A fellow Australian fan told me she thought live music was primal. Our society is so disconnected from our from our spirit and primal energies and each other. When you get in a room of people and scream lyrics together, that ancient primal 
connection of music and communal expression resurfaces and inhibitions are discarded for an hour or two. So it wasn't just me. Clearly, from the research I had found and the interviews I had conducted, the message was consistent. Live music was something that took people to a spiritual experience in which they felt connection and oneness. And when this connection was found, they sought, they sought out this experience time and time again because of how healing and cathartic and spiritual it was. My third time. 15,000 of us in Perth Arena, April of 2017, just a few months ago. I did the thing I thought I'd never do. The thing I thought was so completely ridiculous. I camped out for the show. I camped out for the show for 34 hours, to be exact. It was Friday morning when I arrived, and the concert was Saturday night. But there were some people who had been there since Wednesday night. We couldn't start lining up outside the actual arena yet, so we had settled on a patch of wood chips across the road. I already knew a couple people there, so I got comfortable right away, and within five minutes, the Uno was out. Once again, we sung along to our favorite songs, shared food and picnic blankets and stories, created inside jokes, bonded over card games, and laughed and laughed and laughed. When it came time, the line made its way over to the arena doors, we reset our camp, and huddled together as we fell asleep on the cold, hard concrete floor. I woke at 6 a.m. to the sounds of more and more people shuffling their cold bodies into line. Today was the day. We got up as quickly as our exhausted stiff selves would allow. Now this day was fairly similar to the day before, but involved a lot less wood chips poking into our bums, and a lot more people all experiencing that same nervous excitement. So now, we're only minutes away from being let in. Everything has been packed up, we've taken photos with our friends, finished up any body paint or signs, and we're impatiently waiting for the doors to open. The nervous excitement has multiplied and you can hear it in the giddy chatter. Then, after 34 hours of sleeping on wood chips and concrete, concrete we were let in. Second row center, it bloody paid off. <laughs> I was exactly where I wanted to be, surrounded by my best friends, the people I had spent 34 hours bonding and sharing and connecting with. And as we laughed and cried and screamed and jumped, I felt it again, that spiritual connection to myself and to everyone and everything around me. Once again, I experienced the kaleidoscope of butterflies flying through the stomachs surrounding me, the back and forth flow of the crowd I'd grown to love. Once again, I experienced the blur of ecstatic, exhilarating, grin-inducing music and overwhelmingly powerful lyrics screamed, by this time, thousands. They still depended on us, from holding the legs of the lead as he sung one of his most important verses, to pushing the drummer off as he ran across the crowd in a hamster ball, to feeling the vibrations of the kick and snare through my entire being as I held them on a platform right above me. And finally, watching through tears and electric red confetti as they poured their heart and soul and last drops of energy into bashing huge drums right on top of the crowd. I felt it again, that spiritual experience. I felt connected to myself and to everyone and everything around me. Live music had once again taken me to a spiritual experience. I want to encourage everyone to seek out live music and the effect it can have on a person. Because in a society that is so withdrawn from spirituality, it is so important for us to feel and know this experience. So parents, next time your kid asks to go to that show, even if it is a little expensive or in another country, let them go. <laughs> it just might change their life. to experience the spirituality of live music with our award-winning band, Modest Renus and the People. We don't want anyone sitting down, so if you could all stand up, please come to the front, come vote. We're going to be putting Testify, a vote you guys in the machine button. So come to the front, everybody, please.
Because of past now, because of the past, we can't